video, we're going to be talking about that age-old question. Dual monitors or an ultra-wide? So, if you found this video because you're thinking about picking up a new monitor, stick around. This video is for you. Thank you to Provado VPN for sponsoring this video. More on that later. So, when it comes to the conversation of dual monitors versus an ultra-wide monitor, I can safely say that I have been there and done that to every aspect of that conversation. I've had my monitors in my setup in every type of orientation that, that you can imagine. I've had them stacked, I've had them side by side, I've had them whatever this orientation is behind me. I've had an ultra wide on its own, I've had an ultra wide with a second monitor. So today we're going to be taking a look at the benefits of each of these because they definitely do both have some benefits. And we'll also be talking about why I've switched from an ultra wide back to dual monitors. And I know that you don't care about some random dude set up on the internet, so we'll be talking about what could be best for you if you're thinking about picking up a new monitor. So let's start off with the ultra wide. And before we get into this, apologies about the footage that I'm going to be using. It's older footage because I obviously don't have an ultra wide anymore. So the footage may not be the best, but we're going to go with it anyway. So when I say I had an ultra wide, I don't mean one of these 30 inch ultra wide screens. I mean, I had a super ultra wide. I had the Samsung CJ89, a 43 inch ultra wide. And that thing was crazy. And that is one thing that I do recommend if you are thinking about picking up an ultra wide, especially if it's going to be your one and only monitor. I do recommend if you have the space, of course, going for one of those bigger 43 or even 49 inch monitors. And you might be thinking that a 49 inch monitor sounds way too big, but actually a 49 inch monitor with a 32 by nine aspect ratio is the same screen space as two 27 inch 16 by nine monitors. I know that that doesn't add up, but the way that you measure monitors from corner to corner and just, it, it is the same, but I know it doesn't add up. So one thing that I would definitely recommend if you are thinking about picking up an ultra wide is go as big as possible because it'll be worth it. So let's start with the things that I liked about the ultra wide. And the first thing that really does come to mind is the productivity that ultra wides offer. I'm thinking back to when I was in university and I was doing a lot with spreadsheets. I had spreadsheets that were hundreds of columns long and having an ultra wide really did streamline that whole process when using those spreadsheets. So anything to do with work or productivity, anything like that, and ultra wide really does enhance that experience. Just having so much screen space available to you just makes things like spreadsheets and things like that just a lot more easier to deal with. So one of the other things that I was gonna mention about an ultra wide is actually to do with gaming. So if you're into your gaming, especially those single player games, with that ultra wide being so wide and curved, you really feel like immersed into your game. Like the first time that I played an FPS game on the ultra wide with it all curved and stuff, you really just feel like you're, you know, you're really in there and you're immersed in the game. Your whole like peripheral vision and everything is all the game. So it's not like you just focused on a small monitor like these ones behind me. Everything you can see is just the game. So that is a great experience, especially if you've never done that before. It's definitely something that you might want to try. If you're into your more competitive games, maybe it's not the best decision to go with an ultra wide. But for things like those single player games, it was definitely worth picking up because it just it's just a totally different experience. Another thing that I preferred on the ultra wide compared to these two monitors is obviously the lack of bezels in the middle. It's just one big screen. If you've got two dual monitors in landscape mode, you've always got that bezel in the middle. And especially if you've got work tasks to focus on. I find that even just having that little bezel in the middle, I do this in my office in work where I've got dual monitors. I find that whatever's on the other screen and I'm focused on my main screen, I always forget about that other screen. And having an ultra wide without the bezel, it just meant I could focus on both of them. I don't know what it is, but that bezel really made me not focus on whatever's on the other screen. That can be a good thing and a bad thing, I guess. But having it all there in front of you with no interruptions in the middle, no bezels, it just lets you focus on all of those things at the same time. One of the other things which is great about an ultra wide, which is probably mentioned in every ultra wide video, but probably applies to the least amount of you, is when you're editing videos or things like that. Being able to see your whole timeline stretched across that massive screen, it just makes editing videos a whole lot easier. But I know that probably doesn't apply to most of you, so. We're just going to leave it at that. So one final thing that I did want to mention about ultra wides is just how cool and how clean that they look. It's always like the center of a setup. It's always the first thing you notice. It's probably, if you go back in some of my thumbnails and some of my older videos, it's probably one of the first things that you notice in some of those thumbnails. It really does stand out and it is just a great thing to have in your setup. And you've got to admit on whatever side you fall on that they do look great. So some of the things that I didn't like as much about the ultra wides. Firstly, it isn't really an ultra wide specific one, but it does happen with a lot of ultra wides and because of the huge screens that they obviously come with, you need a big stand to go with them to hold them up. And I absolutely hate having a big massive clunky stand on your desk, just taking up all the room. I did end up putting my ultra wide on a monitor arm, but even then finding a monitor arm that can hold such a huge monitor and usually because they're so big, they're quite heavy, 
So you do need to look around quite a lot to find a decent monitor arm that can hold your ultrawide. It's all just a bit of an added pain that you have to deal with when you get an ultrawide. I did end up finding a monitor arm that could hold my ultrawide and I did a dedicated video about that. So if you're thinking about picking up an ultrawide and you're thinking also about getting a monitor arm, so I'll put a link to that down below just to save you hours looking around like I spent. So one of the other disadvantages of an ultrawide is that some programs and some applications don't really support ultrawides. Some of the things that come to mind straight away are some games don't really don't support ultrawides. You either get black bars on the side or some of them are just super stretched down and it just doesn't look great. You cut off half of your screen. Some, some games just really aren't supported and it shows. It's usually the smaller budget, maybe smaller games on Steam and stuff. But I have had some kind of AAA games that really haven't been supported by ultrawides as well. Another thing that comes to mind is when you're watching things on YouTube or movies on Netflix or something, you're always going to get black bars on the side. Especially when you get an ultrawide that's like 43 or 49 inches, there's always going to be those black bars on the side. Whether that bothers you or not, that's up to you to decide. The next kind of big drawback to ultrawides is the price. So most of the ultrawides that I've been looking at are around £500 and above. And if you're looking at a higher spec one with maybe 1440p or 144hz, then you're going quite a bit above that as well. So they can become quite expensive when you start looking at these ultrawides. And you could probably get two decently spec'd out single normal monitors for under the price of one ultrawide. So they can easily become quite expensive. So you really need to figure out if an ultrawide is really for you. And I guess that's why you're watching this video. So hopefully the video helps you. And finally, one of the drawbacks to an ultrawide is we're going back to gaming for this one. It's all well and good, especially if you find a game that does support ultrawides. It's all well and good, it looks great, but you do need to remember that your GPU will be working extra hard to push more of those pixels to fill out that screen space. So your GPU will be working extra hard and you're probably getting slightly lower frame rates than if you were just on a 16x9 monitor. That's something just to keep in mind, especially if you've got a lower end GPU. If you've got like a 3080 or a 3070 or something, then it probably doesn't matter too much. But that's something just to keep in mind if you think about picking one of these up. So, super quickly, because we're not done yet. Today's video is brought to you by Pravado VPN. Did you know that if you're connected to an unsecure network, all of your data is out there on the internet for pretty much anyone who wants to, to take it. But with a VPN, you get an extra layer of protection by encrypting all of your data. But you probably already know that. For me, the most exciting part about a VPN is that it allows you access to all sorts of movies and TV that you just can't get access to in your country. So, if you want to go and watch all those Japanese animes, on Netflix, then just change your location to Japan and off you go. For me, I changed my Netflix to the American Netflix. There's just so many better series on there. So if that sounds good to you, the best way that I've found to do that is through Pravado VPN. Right now, they've got a crazy Black Friday deal on. Or you can just go for the free trial and see how you like it. If you're interested, I'll have a link down in the description below. A huge thank you to Bravado for giving me this opportunity and a huge thank you to you if you go and check it out. That's it, back to the video. So, with ultrawides out the way, let's talk about dual monitors. So these ones behind me, I picked up around two months ago maybe, and they're both LG Ultra Gear monitors. They're both different specs, and I've got a video on each of them on my channel, so I'll try to remember to link both of those videos in the description below. I think the main reason for me switching back to dual monitors was one, I just got bored at looking at the same thing. With lockdown and finishing uni at this desk pretty much this whole time, I just got a little bit bored of looking at the same screen the whole time. And two, I just wanted an upgrade. My ultrawide was 120Hz and still 1080p, so I wanted to try a higher refresh rate and a higher resolution monitor, and that's what I got. And that kind of leads us onto one of the bigger benefits of having dual monitors. So while it's all well and good that I can do multiple tasks on the same screen on my ultrawide, what if one of those tasks needs a dead high colour accurate screen? And what if one's better on a higher resolution? And what if one's better like a game with higher refresh rate? Having multiple monitors means that I can do different tasks on different panels and not be limited to just a one ultrawide panel. So for me, I've got a 240Hz gaming monitor at 1080p, so I've got all of those Hz for those FPS games, and then I've got a higher resolution 1440p monitor for when I want those higher resolutions. Another thing, like I mentioned before, full screen applications just work better on a normal monitor, 16x9 monitor. If I wanted to watch a YouTube video on full screen on the ultrawide, it'd take up the whole screen. It's not really possible to watch a full screen YouTube video and do something else at the same time on an ultrawide. But with the dual monitors, it's super easy to do. I can just have one on full screen and I can work away and do something else on the other screen, which is just a little bit of a pain to do on an ultrawide. The next thing that I like about having two monitors is the orientation that you can do them in. So for example, this orientation I've got behind me. So I've got one in landscape and one in portrait. And it's definitely possible to do with an ultrawide. I guess you could have an ultrawide in portrait mode but I think that should be a bit mad and it'd be quite hard to do without wall mounting the monitor or whatever 
and that's just not possible for me. So this orientation that I've got right now, I've got one portrait and one vertical, it works great for me. And you might think, why has he got a portrait monitor? This goes for one, works great on a portrait monitor. And two, this is probably a stupid reason to have a portrait monitor. And it sounds weird when I'm saying it now, but when I'm making videos for my TikTok channel, which if you haven't checked out already, you should definitely go and check out. It just makes making those videos a lot easier when the video, I can record my screen and it's already in nine by 16. So it works for TikTok, great. Which I realized is a bit of a stupid reason to have a whole monitor dedicated to making TikToks, but okay. So one of the other benefits that I found from having dual monitors, which I actually forgot about when I had my ultra wide was, which was the ability to move them around. And it does kind of depend on whether you have a monitor arm or not. But when I had my ultra wide, I never touched it, never moved it, never angled it in different ways because it was just too big and heavy to be moving around that much. But since I've switched back to a smaller screen, I've found myself moving this all the time. So when I'm playing games, I might pull it down and pull it a little bit closer to me. Or if I'm sat back on my bed over there, I might put the monitor up so I can see it better. Or if I'm just chilling watching YouTube videos, I might pull it out and angle it towards me and put my feet on the desk. Having the ability to just move it around wherever I want, it's just a lot more convenient for me and it's a great option that I just never really had when I had my ultra wide. And finally, the last benefit of having dual monitors is the price. Most of these smaller screens are a lot cheaper than the ultra wide and you can probably pick up two dual monitors, decently spec dual monitors for the price of one ultra wide. Okay, so some of the things that I don't like about having these dual monitors. I think the first thing that everyone will land on is the bezel. I've kind of positioned mine in a way that doesn't bother me too much about the bezel, but in a more traditional two portrait monitors next to each other. A lot of the time people will find themselves staring right in the middle at a bezel and that's just not great. And that's something where an ultra wide really does take the cake. And the seamless screen on an ultra wide is the clear winner when it comes to that aspect. Just having no bezels in the middle, it's just a great experience. And again, one of the other things that aren't great about having dual monitors is that some applications are just better on an ultra wide. Again, I'm gonna go back to those spreadsheets like I mentioned before. You just can't get that same experience on a 16 by nine monitor like this. Okay, so what do you guys think? For me, I think it kind of depends on what you're gonna be using the screen for and what you really do and what you want out of your ultra wide or your dual monitors. Hopefully I've given you a few good things to think about if you're making that decision between an ultra wide and dual monitors. For me personally, I'm happy I've got these dual monitors back and think for what I do at this desk, dual monitors is the way to go. But if you're thinking about picking one of these up for work or something, then maybe an ultra wide might be the way to go. I think that the main thing that I do miss about having an ultra wide is just that wow factor. When you walk in and you've just got the massive screen, it's always the first thing that people look at. But who knows, maybe in a year's time, I'll be making a video on why I've switched back to an ultra wide. We just don't know. But I want you to let me know down below what you're thinking about picking up. Are you gonna get dual monitors or are you gonna get an ultra wide? Let me know down below. That's about it. I wanna thank you for watching. See you guys in the next one.